Table for One, Episode 16, Top 100 Solo Games Commentary. Welcome back to Table for One. Happy New Year. It's 2017. You are here for Episode 16. Uh, This is Anthony and Jason. Yo, peoples, what's up? All right. And we have a very special episode this week. I'm going to let Jason take it away. Okay. So, um... This is a podcast about solo games, and we've uh, pretty consistently referred people over to BGG's uh, One Player Guild. And anybody who's visited over there knows that over the last month or so, I guess, or longer than that, um, a an intrepid poster uh, has requested people to vote on the top 100 solo games. So uh, Anthony and I figured we'd do a commentary episode. We're going to just talk about the list and, you know, see what's on there. Uh, but, you know, we said, you know what, let's not, let's not stop there. Let us just go to the source himself. So we have the man who puts the, a lot of time in to putting together the spreadsheet and put together the top 100 solo games. So I'd like to introduce everybody to Kevin Erskine. Kevin, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm looking forward to all right, so um, so this is a commentary episode on the Top 100 Solo Games 2016 edition. The list has been running for about, I think this is the third year? Right, third year. Gotcha, and the, the participation has gone up every time. Uh, I think the first year was 85, and then this year was 364 participants. And this is a lot uh, for, you know, solo, 364 solo gamers, and it's just going to keep on going up from there. So, um, well, before we get into the solo list, Kevin, you want to talk, uh, tell us a little about yourself and your history as a gamer slash solo gamer? Sure. I, um, I've been gaming for a long time, I guess, back. Uh, I had a lot of the old Avalon Hill stuff. Um, I used to play both sides of war games and do stuff like that. And uh, after my kids uh, got older and moved out and I started looking back into playing games, got into solo games, and it's just exploded in the last uh for me, about the last six years, I've really gotten back into it. So many games out there that you know, <laughs> yeah. between co-op and pure solo, it's it's phenomenal. So then um, we're obviously focusing on the top solo games. Um, just wanted to make something clear off the bat to everybody. This isn't uh, – we're not going to make descriptions of games. We're going to mention a lot of games, but we're not going to go into, you know, this is how the game plays everything. Maybe a little bit just for illustration purposes. But for the most part, we were going to really, this is more of a highlights of the list discussion. Uh, we're not going to go into every game. We're not going to describe the games. We're just going to hit the list. Uh, Anthony will put the sh- uh, list in the show notes. Anthony, you're going to do that, right? Yes. Now that you've said that. No, of course. <laughs> yeah, if you look at the show notes on the, uh, on the the here on the podcast here or on the website, um, we'll post a link to the uh, list over on Board Game Geek. It is an amazing list. Kevin spoke well when he said in his intro to that list, uh, apologies in advance to your wallets. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a really great list. So we wanted to, you know, spend some time and, you know, kind of run through it. So before we get into the actual list itself, Kevin, you want to talk a little bit about the process of the list, um, why you do it, are you going to keep on doing it, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um First, I mean, I, yeah, we will keep on doing it as long as people enjoy it. It seems to be a, a highlight each year, so that's, so as far as I'm concerned, I'll keep doing it. Um, it started when I watched, you know, you, Tom Vassell would do the you know, Dice Towers, People's Choice, and his Top 100, and I'd watch it, and there's so many games, there's good games, but so few of the games that I like to play, the solo games. And so I, you know, I brought it to the people at the One Player Guild and said, you know, we ought to do this, and right away everybody thought hey this is a great idea let's do it but how do we do it and i said tell you what here's here's my suggestion and they're like well if you want to do it go ahead and so we kept it simple we just asked for people to and you know you could vote for any game you wanted it didn't matter if you played it if you play both sides as long as you play it solo we count it so print and play games co-op games you played multi-characters pure player games um you know if you want to play a war game you know, both sides, fine. Uh, we, we, we didn't want something where the app played the other side for you. So then it's really not not the same thing. How we're going to do this is if you look on the BGG page, uh, you look at the top 
uh, 100 Games 2016 edition. It's in five pages. Uh, the first four pages are split up into 25 games each, and that's where the top 100 solo games are. We're going to go page by page and just pick some highlights and uh, do some commentary. And then the fifth page, I think, is like um, honorable mentions, I think, Kevin? Yeah, it was honorable mentions. I listed also um, games that someone had put as their number one that didn't make the top 100. So give them a chance to maybe say why, you know, it's the greatest game ever made. Cool. Okay, so definitely all five pages are worth looking at. We're going to look at, we'll try to focus on the top 100 just for the sake of time. Um, but we love you, Zombie Side. <laughs> so um, in this first page, I what strikes me about this, it's the phrase, I didn't know if you realized this, but uh, there was a lot of games that I just did not realize were solo games. I'm looking in particular at number 91, X-Wing. I had no idea that people were playing that game solo. And like, I look at the comments and everything and I find out that there are these, there's like homemade AI and this other kind of automated thing that fans have made. I really wanted to kind of kick off discussion here because I feel like this, uh, this is why this list is awesome. I had no idea. And now, like now that I know that X-Wing is a you know, solo bubble game, you know, because of what the fans have done, that, you know, that, that kind of opens my eyes to all sorts of other different games. And I think there's a couple of other games that I didn't know, like Orleans, I didn't know was a solo and that kind of thing. So um, is that kind of one of the things that you wanted to do with this list or was that kind of a happy accident? I think it's more a happy accident. Um, you know, the, the saying where there's a will, there's a way. I think people love the game, so they decide, you know, let's let's see what we can. Um, I, I saw recently there's there's someone's had a discussion of doing making some kind of or the ring um, AI, you know, Ooh. like a <laughs> yeah. Well, and and you know, I mean, I lo- I love the idea of the game. I have it. I've just never played it. And you know, if you can, if so, if you get a game that you love that you, you think wow, maybe it'd be fun solo, and you just mention it, I bet you get a lot of people who would jump on that and start you know, give you ideas. And next thing you know, you've got a uh, way to do it. Yeah. I mean, I, th- I think it should be doable. I know star Wars rebellion, which just came out in what March already has two solo variants. And I just saw a new one went up recently that people are testing. So, and I've seen this X wing one before, actually, I think at one point I Googled it cause I have all these X wing miniatures that I don't use. And I was like, Oh, there is a solo thing. And it's like an 80 page PDF. And I downloaded it, and I started reading it, and there's all the stuff you have to print out and cut up. And I was like, I don't have that much time, but I really want to do it. So it's cool to see that people like it and that there's other stuff out there like that. Yeah, and they vary a lot. Some some of these, um, like you get on the list, Rally Man, it, it's really not a solo, but what someone does is they put up these challenges every month in the one-player guild. And so you basically play and post your time and, and someone else is doing, you know, you've set up a track. Everybody has the exact same track and you're on your own. Um, try not to cheat or anything. And then you say what your score is. So it's not necessarily that it's a great game to play alone, but you're, you're kind of playing with others. Um, but you can play it yourself to, you know, practice and do things. Um, some of these are just, you know, they're built in solo modes. Um, some of them, the, the solo is very different than the, the real game. Or the which cool. one is your, uh, which one's your favorite? Do you have one that you, that sticks out in this last quarter that you'd like to proselytize? I was like, Oh, pay attention to this one. Uh, I, I love myth. Myth was my number two. Um, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. I, I love dungeon crawls and, you know, I get tired of the same roll the dice, move, attack. The other side moves, attacks, and you go back and forth. And myth with the card play is just there's just so much more strategy to it. Um, you, you know, I know it got beat up for the rules and everything else, uh, but the gameplay itself, if people give it a chance, is really good. Uh, and the people who've actually said, you know what, I'll just figure out the rules, I'll work through the ambiguities, and I'll make my own call and keep playing it, love it. Yeah, we fought through the rules what, two, three years ago when it came out to review it, and we had a lot of fun. And then for whatever reason, podcast probably, uh, 
went on and played a bunch of other games. By the time we got back to it, it was like, we have to reread the rules. And so we just haven't played it since. But I really enjoyed this one. So it's been on my shelf waiting for me to get back through the 2.0 rules so I can play it solo. Um, it's one of those ones where I'm like, I know it's good. Just got to dive back in. This is such a cool... And just everything in the box is so, you know, well produced. It looks, it looks good. Yeah, I got one for you, Anthony. The Bo- Castles of Burgundy card game made a splash, number seventy nine. Bet you're happy about that one. Yes, yeah, that was actually one of my uh, top games of the year overall, and one of the reasons was the solo variant uh, that comes in the box. And there are a couple of other variants that people have made that kind of tweak that. You know, the Aaron. AI <laughs> that felt put in the box, but I like it just the base, the way it is. And it's quick and it's easy. And I played on the coffee table and it's manages to turn a Euro into one of those quick solo card games. So I thought it was pretty cool that it was already up there. Um, I was kind of surprised too how many newer games were on the list. I think there was maybe nine or 10 in this first 25 already. So do you, um, that was another question I had for Kevin, um, <clears throat> especially at this lower part of the list, do you kind of look at some of the turnover and, uh, do you see the turnover a lot here? Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I'd say the top 50, you see a lot of turnover. Um, it, I think especially as we get more and more people involved. You know, in the first 80, I think if four people voted for a game, it made the list. It made the top 100. Now it's getting to the point where to make the top 100, you almost need at least 10 people to like it, which makes it a little harder. So uh, more obscure games fall off the list. Um, some people are kind of that about the idea that print and plays drop off the list because you just either there's too many of them or you just there's none that are super favorites so they've fallen off the list um and and you know every year we're just seeing so many new games that you're bound to get more and more and more that just keep coming and i'm actually glad that you mentioned that because i kind of have a hot take and i admit it i stole this a little bit from the low player count podcast um, they had a criticism of the list that I was really interested in hearing your take on it. Um, my, my point, my game for this is Mice and Mystics. I personally, I know Anthony loves this game. I personally think this is uh, a, a, a kind of a weak game for adults. It's great for kids, not great for adults. And I cannot see how people play this solo yet. It's popular. So it's here. And, this, you know, it's, and it's even at number 77, so it's like kind of high. And it pushes out like a print and play game. You know, um, McKee came out this year, and I thought that was a great game, but it didn't have a chance, uh, you know, compared to some of the other games. Um, they mentioned Roads and Boats, which is not a print and play, obviously, but it's an older game, hard to get. And it's 98 uh, behind some of these more popular kind of, you know, games that might be flash in the pan. So they were a little bit critical. They said, you know, this, you know, is this list more of a popularity contest? Does this list not reflect the true quality of solo of solo games because of the way the voting is structured? So, what do you do? You have any um, uh, comment about that? No, I mean, I think I think they're what they said is probably true. I mean, you you're always going to get, you know, the more. I mean, Friday is a game that I always think of is it's it's always at the top of the list because it one it's cheap it's available everywhere in the world and so a lot of people are going to go and get that um one thing i do worry about a little bit is and we and we try to really emphasize this that you know it's got to be a game you play solo so fortunately like pandemic legacy a lot of people like the game but it didn't it didn't do it's not number one on here because i think most people respect look at it and say no i don't play that solo but i think there are a lot of games and my mystics maybe is one of them that you know i played it with my grandkids i would never play it alone either i find it too easy but where you know i think people have a soft spot for it because they enjoy playing it with other people and maybe it does creep up higher in their list you know i i'm hoping that most people look at it and say no I like this game to play alone, not necessarily because it's a great game to play with others that I happen. Yeah, I kind of imagine a scenario where, what is it, you ask for people to put their top 20 and you tabulate those? Yeah. So I imagine a scenario where like people, they have 10 solo games they love, and then they fill out the list with other stuff. (laughs) 
Well, <laughs> maybe they I played mean, solo. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, some people just just sent in ten, so I think you know they they looked at it and they stopped at ten. And there's a lot of people, as you see the comments on these games, they say, "I like this game, but I only play it multiplayer, so I didn't put it on my list." Mm-hmm. So, which, you know, that's fair. Um, and and what, another thing we tried, we were I was so fearful of is that people would hear about the contest and then they'd go to the Dominion forum and say, "Hey, you should vote for this, so it's the number one game." And it's like, "Come on, really? You guys, nobody's really playing that, so at least not a lot of people." So I was worried about that, which it it seems like it hasn't. It's been pretty good that people have been more or less responsible. But I always think there's going to be some bias in this back of your mind that you know you you enjoy a game, so you vote for it. But but there's some there's some strange ones in here. Um, you know, some people voted for chess, which, <laughs> I mean, you know, playing against an, an app doesn't count. We, you know, we're very clear about that. If you couldn't play the board game normally by yourself, then it shouldn't count. And, you know, so there's some strange ones on this list um, that, you know, as we as we went through it, I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah, I could see that. I mean, I have my uh, my own, I was trying to put my own list together. Uh, recently and i didn't quite have enough to hit the 50 mark um because there were some games in my collection that if you look at them uh like oh it plays solo my mystics being one of those games where i'm like i would never play this by myself you know you know to your point jason i do love my mystics but i like playing with other people uh preferably with the ambiance and the characters and my little painted miniatures and possibly a child in the room um, but i would never play that by myself there's so many other better style types of game in that genre that do play pretty well solo and this one's pretty basic so i could see people crossing that line um it's hard not to i guess you know to your point kevin if, if you really like a game to not let the bias sneak in uh but yeah there's a lot of those i was gonna say we didn't get we didn't get a lot of votes for games that you'd look at and go really people really play that solo we didn't get a lot that were just clearly crazy I mean, a lot for one game that pushed it to the top of the list. Or something. Okay. All right. Uh, Anthony, do you have anything else on the, this section of the list before we move on? Yeah. I mean, the, the only other thing that I thought was interesting was um, Star Trek Frontiers at 100. And I imagine it probably will slip back out of that next year. But uh, being, uh, you know, the close cousin of a never, another very highly ranked game on this list um, and kind of the conversation that happened around that, since it's, you know, now we're starting to see, I guess, games that are solo that have other versions of the same almost mechanics. So I'm interested to see and hear, you know, your guys' thoughts on kind of how that's going to play out. Because it, we see that on the the regular top 100 list where you have two through the ages in the top 10 and multiple versions of Descent up there. Um, how does that play out on the list? I, I don't know. Um, it, it was funny for me because a lot of people said, oh, you know, Star Trek Frontiers is going to beat out Mage Knight. Um, or they were hoping it would split the vote and stuff, and it, it really wasn't even close. I, I think if their games are too similar, the solo player is probably not going to buy both. They, they might, but I guess it depends how similar they are. Like those, I, I see no reason to have Star the Frontiers. Or... Yeah, I mean, they are pretty much exactly the same, with Frontiers being a little simpler, which most of the solo players I know would not want the simpler version of the complicated puzzle game. But... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was an interesting kind of a mix there. And I was surprised, I guess I was surprised that if it was going to make the list that it made it kind of at the end there. Uh, but I guess, yeah, a handful of people probably picked it up and liked the Star Trek theme better. Yeah, and you might, maybe it goes up, you know, you said it might drop off the list. It might go up next year as more, as, you know, becomes more widely available and more people find out about it. Um, okay, so um, we can uh, we can move on. We used to have a lot of games to talk about. <laughs> Um, so this is page two. This is uh, number 75 through 51. And just taking a perusal of the list, the thing that le- leapt out to me, um, probably more than anything, is that this was where a lot of the war solo war games settled. Like you had enemy action Ardanes in the previous list. But in this section of the list, you have a bunch. You have Labyrinth, the War on Terror. You have um, Field Commander Napoleon. D-Date Omaha Beach. Uh, I'll be honest with you guys. I've never played any of these games. I've never even heard of any of these games before I uh, <laughs> saw this list. Um, I'm 
fairly new to gaming. I'm like four to five years that I've been a real board gamer. I was more of an RPG player when I was growing up. Um, <clears throat> and I'm more of a co-op guy. So I, I, the co-op games, I'm all over. Um, Anthony, more of on the Euro end of things. Um, Kevin, is, is is solo war gaming like a thing? And is it a long-standing thing? Yeah, I think it is, but not so much. I, I think there's a there's a whole war gamers group and you know guild, and I don't know that a lot of them spend a lot of time in the one players guild. So what you get, I think this is more. You certainly have some war gamers in the in the group, but I think you get a lot of people who like games in general, and then they'll pick up the odd game now there are some people i see consistently talking about this game or this game or this game and they're always working. but i think that's it i think if you took this boat and you, you know, plastered it in the war gamers group and said hey we'd like to hear your opinion and you guys vote I, I think a lot of these actually a lot of different war games would go up most war gamers are probably going to call the majority of these games as light games some of them they would call europe's so is there one of these games that you would say recommend the, uh, you know, above any of the other games or they all kind of do their own thing? A lot of people like D-Day at Omaha Beach. I found that I found it difficult. I love Warfighter, which is more a card. It's a card game. That, that's a really good game. Fairly simple to get into. Almost all the DVG games, so like Field Commander Napoleon and the one I love, which is coming up soon, is Thunderbolt Apache Leader. Those are all... Those are the games that, that true war gamers or the grognards or whatever would call uh, Euros. But I love Thunderbolt Apache Leader. Uh, it's it's fairly, the rule books are fairly thin. They're easy to understand. Each mission is, you know, you can play in 30 minutes or half an hour, you know, an hour at most. I noticed that uh, for you, Anthony, Caverna was sitting here at number 72. Did it make you sad that it's this low? <laughs> no, no. I mean, Caverna is not a great solo game. It's a it's a sandbox puzzle that you can kind of solve if you play enough. So I don't, I don't actually bring it out that much. I think I didn't count, but I think there's four or five Rosenberg games on this list. And I would agree with most of those being ahead of this. Although I do like it. I just it doesn't come out too often solo. So I wasn't surprised. <laughs> so was there a game that did leap out for you in this cluster? Uh, nothing in particular. No, I mean, like like you, I don't play a lot of these war-themed games, um, whether they're on the Euro end or the war game end. Uh, it's not to say I don't enjoy them. It's just not something I gravitate towards. Uh, so while I'm familiar with some of them and have played a handful, you know, that do have multiplayer um with other people I, I don't really know the games that well uh on the new front uh burgle brothers is great i mean that's i like that game a lot i'm happy to see that on the list especially already oh my. In, you know in the top you know uh the latter half of the top 50 so that's a good one yeah i love i love burgle brothers i think that's one that if it was sold at you know cool stuff and some of these other stores it probably would do a lot better yeah that's a tough one to get and uh my local game store here he orders it I think by the case, so he ends up getting like 20 at a time. So I see it on the shelf all the time, and I forget that other people can't really find it as easily, um, or they have to pay that, that full price off their website. Um, love this one, though. I play it all the time because they have it in stock here, and all the people in the local game group have it. Um, and you throw the tower in there, the 3D tower, and it's quite the experience. <laughs> I've seen pictures of that. That's spectacular. A friend of mine actually built that tower out of... Uh... I think it was uh, styrofoam and some long cardboard tubes. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had one set up at Gen Con that was like had lights on it and then alarms that would go off and like flashing LEDs. Like you could see it from like two aisles away. It was fantastic. <laughs> oh. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the other game I wanted to ask about, you actually mentioned this, Kevin, in the last cluster, but this is where it landed. Uh, Pandemic Legacy at number 60. Were you surprised to see this on this list? And and did, have you played it? And, you know, what, how, what are your feelings about that whole uh, Pandemic Legacy phenomenon? I, I mean, I like, I like, I've always liked Pandemic. I like the Legacy idea. I've only played this, we're still... I only play it with family, so we're still back in April or something, I think. 
So, but I'd seen it on the list on this on the um, solitaire games on your table list quite a few times that people were playing it solo. So it didn't surprise me. I would still bet that some of the people who put this on the list, you know, have played it maybe once solo, but you know, quite a bit multiplayer. Um, but I, I do like it. I do like the idea of it. I, I prefer a non-destructive legacy. <laughs> yeah, we talked about this a little bit last week and how it was, it almost makes you cringe a little at the thought of playing, you know, a $70 game by yourself that you then destroy. It's one thing if you share it with four, three other people and it's this big, epic, long experience, but just playing a solo game, like, just get all the pandemic expansions and throw them on the table. It's fine, you know. I, I, I was a little surprised to see it this high and that there are that many people who've played it solo and voted it up there. And the only thing I can think of is that people heard how just incredible, amazing it was or something, and they just had to try it for themselves. I, I would never have got it for myself, so my kids got it for me for Christmas, and we play it together. But yeah, I think I would have just read spoilers and saw what it was about. All right, and with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this half of our, uh, our run through the top 100 solo games, uh, People's Choice in the one-player guild. Uh, next week, we're going to be back. We're going to talk about the top 50. We're going to be here back here with Kevin. We're going to go through those, and we're going to you know, share some of our favorites and our surprises and all that. But for this week, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. Um, Kevin, thank you for being on. We're looking forward to speaking with you again next week as well. Hey, you're welcome. It's been a pleasure. All right, guys. So that is everything for this week. Make sure you check us out on... Board Game Geek on our guild there in the Board Gamers Anonymous Guild. We'll post all these episodes as well as the link to the top 100 list. So you can take a look at that as you're listening. Um, we are also on Twitter and Facebook. We post there every single day. Uh, you can check us out on BoardGamersAnonymous.com where we post the show notes for all of our Table for One episodes as well as the articles that go with them and Board Gamers Anonymous. And last but not least, please, 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 if you are listening to this and you have a free moment, uh, leave us a quick review on iTunes. We'd love to get your feedback, and it helps more people find the podcast, which is always awesome. But for this week, that's going to be everything. And until next time, we'll save you a seat at this table for one. Later, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>